we've already discussed chemical reactions. We know that chemical reactions are changes where new chemicals are formed. In this chapter, we're going to look at chemical reactions in more depth, and we're going to look at chemical equations. So there is a chemical equation written here on this slide. Um, one molecule of dinitrogen pentoxide in the gaseous phase reacts with one molecule of liquid water to form two molecules of nitric acid in the aqueous phase. So if we look at this chemical equation, there are a few things that I want to point out. One, all chemical reactions have an arrow in them. That arrow means something has happened. And on the left-hand side of the arrow are always the chemicals that are reacting, and those are always known as the reactants. And the chemicals on the right-hand side are always known as the products because those are what are produced. Now, often chemical equations will include the phase of the chemicals that are involved in the chemical reaction. And I want to point out the difference between subscripts and coefficients. So we are familiar with subscripts. These are the little numbers to the right of an element symbol that lets us know how many atoms are in a molecule or how many ions are in a formula unit. So if we look at dinitrogen pentoxide, two nitrogen atoms, and five oxygen atoms in one molecule. Those numbers can't change. Dinitrogen pentoxide is always going to have those subscripts. Water will always have these subscripts, and nitric acid will always have these subscripts. The coefficient is the number in front of the chemical formula. And if a coefficient is not expressly written, we take that to be 1. So 1 and 2O5, 1 H2O goes to 2 HNO3. And those coefficients can stand for molecules. So one molecule of dinitrogen pentoxide, one molecule of water, two molecules of nitric acid. Or they can stand for moles. And when they stand for moles, that's actually a little bit more useful for us at chem as chemists. Below our chemical equation, we see the um, space filling models for the chemicals in this chemical reaction. And if we count the number of nitrogens, which are blue, and the number of oxygens, which are red, and the number of hydrogens, which are white, we see that we have equal number of each atoms, um, equal number of atoms of each element on both sides of the arrow. Now, an important thing to remember is that this chemical reaction, as it's written, is not a static thing. As the reaction moves forward, the reactants are going to become less and less. They're going to be used up or consumed. And we'll get more and more products as this reaction goes forward in time. Now, as we talk about chemical equations, we also need to talk about the law of conservation of mass. The law of conservation of mass states that atoms cannot be created nor destroyed during a chemical reaction. So in other words, the mass of the reactants is going to be equal to the mass of the products. So atoms are just rearranging their cells. They're not forming or just being destroyed. So what that means for us is that equations must be balanced. In other words, the number of atoms for each element must be the same on each side of the arrow. So if we go back up to that original chemical equation that we looked at, we see that it is balanced. Two nitrogens. Uh, if we just count the, from the molecular model, two nitrogens on the left, two nitrogens on the right, um, six oxygens total on the left, six oxygens in total on the right, and two hydrogens on each side. We're not going to be able to draw a molecular model for every chemical equation that we write, so we need to know how to count atoms um, in, a balance, in a chemical equation. The way we do that is we multiply the coefficient by the subscript for each element. So in this chemical equation, I have three elements, nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. And I'm just going to go left to right. I'm going to choose nitrogen. When I multiply the coefficient by the subscript, 1 times 2, I get two nitrogens. 2 times 1, two nitrogens. Let's look at oxygen. 1 times 5 is 5 oxygens, plus 1 times 1 is a total of 6. In my product side, 2 times 3 is 6. And then finally, let's look at hydrogen. 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 times 1 is 2. So to count atoms, we multiply the coefficient by the subscript. 
Here's another example of a balanced chemical equation, and here the coefficients are highlighted in blue, except for the coefficient of 1. It's not written. Um, what the meaning of the coefficient, as I said earlier, is going to be most useful if we think of it as moles. And one of the issues that arises when we balance chemical equations is um, the appearance of polyatomic ions. And so let's look at balancing this chemical equation um, with polyatomic ions. So on my left hand side, how many irons do I have? 1 times 2. On my product side, 1 times 2. My irons are balanced. Let's look at oxygen. 1 times 3, 3 oxygens. 3 times 1, 3 oxygens. Now, I do have oxygen in both sulfuric acid and iron 3 sulfate, but I didn't count them. And the reason I didn't count them is because those oxygens are part of the polyatomic ion sulfate. As long as a polyatomic ion is on both sides of the, chem of the arrow, you can just balance the polyatomic ion, and that can save a lot of time. So I have three sulfates on my reactant side, and three sulfates on my product side. So my sulfates are balanced. And then hydrogen, three times two is six. Three times two is six. My hydrogens are balanced.